Uh, I'll go back afterwards and tag you. That way, uh, we want to focus on my ground. Ba -ba -da -ba, still loading the Facebook page. I have to sneeze been... right now. Of course, I have to sneeze. Do it, bro. No one gives a fuck, dude. If you want to see my last shit, dude, it, just turn the video off. And, turn, the, turn the sound off. I'll turn the sound video. Off. That way we could see. <laughs> And you can All make right. questions on how loud it was. Yeah, dude. I give it a seven. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, so for everyone just joining us, uh, this is Jared with the Digital Battlefield Podcast. Today we're talking with Hans Skillrud. Uh, he's a web developer and co-founder of Termageddon, which is the auto-updating privacy policy uh, for the web. How's it going today, Hans? I'm good. How are you? Dude, I'm, I'm awesome, man. Every day, all day. Fuck it, you know? It is what it is. I think we've had so many phone calls together, but I think this is the first time we're actually getting to see each other, uh, which is nice. Yeah, dude. We, we've done a couple of uh, those uh, admin bark calls with, yeah, uh, with Kyle. So, yeah, this is point. the first one with just you and me, though. That's right. That's right. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, before you built Termageddon, uh, you had your own web agency and was a developer in that. What was that like? Yeah, so um, I started a full-service digital marketing company in 2012. Okay. Um, and over the course of years, uh, we decided rather than trying to do a bunch of services kind of well, let's do a few services really well. So we okay. got rid of all digital marketing services and focused on web design and support. Awesome, man. And... Uh, how long did you run that before it ran its course? So I ran it for seven years. I, I built it up to a 12 person agency in downtown Chicago. Um, nice. And that's how I lost seven inches of hairline. Um, one, one inch a year. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, I decided to sell that company in April of last year, 2019. Um, because okay. uh, Termagun was really hitting off and I wanted to focus my time on, on that endeavor instead. Yeah, man, that makes sense. And uh, you actually have achieved the epitome of what a lot of uh, digital agencies uh, seek out, and that's to build to that point where you can sell the agency and you know, inject yourself from it. Uh, what was that experience like? Well, you know, I never really actually intended to sell the agency. I was, I was going to be an agency owner probably for life by the way things are going. Um, <laughs> it, was, it just so happened I was dating a privacy attorney and you know, we had this nice. really cool idea to create an auto updating privacy policy solution. But um, yeah, it's been, um, it's been a great you know, uh, experience because seven years with the desire from day one wanting to grow. And I think there's a lot of pros and cons to that that I'd be more than happy to talk about. But I decided I wanted to grow my agency so it could run without me. And right. you know, that was a, a great North Star. And what it does is it forces you to create like standard operating procedures um, that help you manage your staff better by holding them to a standard that everyone agrees to and signs off on. So right. um, it's a great way to help get yourself out of the day to day and put the right hands in it. Right. Working on your business instead of in it. That's right. Yeah, it's exactly right, and it's it's yeah, it it's not an easy feat. Um, it, it certainly is not, especially no. when you're going from one to two, and then from you know, and, and then from there it gets a little bit easier, but not totally. Um, right. Uh, but as you, you grow, you get to find people that specialize more in certain areas, um, which is really cool because that just because it takes maybe some time for them to get acclimated with how you do things and, and maybe they teach you some things they want to do. Right. Um, so it takes a little while to really become fully like immersed, like an employee within the right. web agency world. But once they are there, then they go past your expectations and they start doing things right. that you didn't know were possible. They find yeah. expertise in their specific area of focus. So from front end designers, finding new ways to use JavaScript to animate visuals you would have never guessed before to, salespeople thinking about partnerships and like forming partnerships where you're you're working with people that can feed you multiple projects you know it's just it's really exciting how it develops awesome man. i definitely i uh, would love to learn a little more over some brandy on the side yeah yeah i'm more than happy <laughs> to give you my two cents i, I yeah, you know, leads was always a challenge um you know most agencies that are good get referrals from in, internally from their customers and stuff that's yep. great. 
Um, the only real aha moment I had was when I realized rather than trying to work with one-off companies, like try to work with companies like digital marketing companies that can be, bring you business on a consistent basis. You can, right. you know, and, and build really strong bonds with those few people rather than trying to build really strong bonds with hundreds. Um, right. Focus on the B2B instead of the B2C. Yes, very much that so. That way they're funneling you business instead of you having to find it. Yep. Yeah. And that was like year five. Like, man, if I would have done that earlier, I get rid of Yeah, I, I picked that up at year two. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> You're smarter than me. So that's what happened. <laughs> awesome, dude. So uh, when did you guys actually launch uh, Termageddon? So we launched Termageddon in, um, I think it was a soft launch. It, it was the, the idea was created in 2016. That's probably the best place to put it. 2016 okay. was really the idea. Like, let's get, you know, let's put this together. And uh, I think it was like 2017 when we launched um, the actual okay. MVP. Um, but things weren't really, it was always a back burner project because, you know, agency life was everything. Um, like right. That was what I was doing. That was my everything. So it really was just a back burner project. Um, and then the time came for the agency to really consider expanding. And we were thinking about taking on some additional investors or, or, buy, or selling the company if there was an interested prospect. Right. And, uh, and, and it ended up being the latter. So we, we had the prospect, um, uh, buyer come in and buy the company. And, and so then I had no choice. Term gotten all the way in. And the moment yeah, you focus all of your time on working on two dozen projects at any given moment to focusing on one product that you own, um, it's certainly, and, and then you bring the years and years of experience you have, like, right. you have, like yeah, it's, it's a great combo. Um, yeah, it's well, great. that, that um, it gives you that focus and clarity that you need to push your own project to that next level. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and I know this sounds really, I don't know why this came to mind even, but I think before the, my experience with digital, you know, I don't think I could describe user flows of like what I even want someone doing on my website, you know, to think that I would right. build a system like Termageddon without even understanding what user flows were, weren't in and out. It'd be a right. disaster. There'd be just it'd be a mess. So something as simple as just user flows, which is just how does a user use your website or your application? Right. Um, it's things like that, which get, become second nature for any agency owner. But yeah. you know, you've got to get used to that first, in my opinion. So Definitely. Um, I've actually learned through the course of the past like two months, I've been um, focusing on helping a lot of people. And through that um, journey, I've realized that stuff that's common knowledge for you and me is just you know, the type of knowledge that everyone out there who's not like you and me needs. It's just highly uncommon knowledge outside of this little sphere that we're in. And so um, I've actually been trying to push push that foundational level stuff myself because it's highly important. And just like you said, uh, all of that experience, you know, helped you focus and push yourself to that next level. I I love that. I love that outlook. I, I really do. It's, by the end of me running my agency, I felt like I was worthless. I got to the point where I was like, I'm worthless. Everyone else is doing a better job than me at what they're supposed to be doing a job at. So rather than spreading myself too thin and doing a crap job, yeah. I have experts in the right positions doing things that, that need to do to excel the company. So, right. um, you know, it definitely is a conscious effort, but I, I really like your endeavor of pursuing people with different professional backgrounds um have you ever heard of the term a fractal like what do you know what fractals are is that the person who gets a uh, percentage of the company to come and run it no um i'm not really sure where that's coming from but a, a fractal is from my understanding like a mathematical equation oh that okay hard to visualize until someone created a visual for it and then, and then there's a sensation on youtube at least it just shows like the more concentrate like the more you go into a certain pattern in, in, there's infinite more patterns that keep appearing as you dive deeper and deeper. And I think a lot about that with specialization. Like you were talking about how you connected with someone and they are so specialized and they have all these insights to share with you because in their world, that's second nature. And in our world, we have our own version of our own definition of second nature because we become focused in certain things. Like, right. That's why I like your endeavor, which is connecting those because yeah. you connect experts with experts. They're, you're working with the best of the best. In, in, uh, yeah, man. You have the most potential to do great things. 
<laughs> I definitely love it. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things, uh, full transparency for anyone out there listening, uh, I am a Termageddon agency partner, and I fucking love it. <laughs> Hans know this. He knows this because I'll send him an email or I'll call him and be like, hey, dude, can you do this? He'll be like, yeah, dude, we can do that. I'm like, well, fucking hey, let's do this. <laughs> You know, so uh, I, I'm definitely, uh, I've even contributed to uh, uh, concepts and ideas for uh, new features and shit like yeah. that. So I, dude, I, I fucking love it. Uh, the best part about it is how simple it is because the whole platform, as uh, Hans can attest to, is basically inputting a script on your page, right? A single line piece of code, and then your entire policy is there automatically there and it's updated as needed uh, and what's even cooler about it is that there's no uh, there's no style applied to it that way whatever your default css is for your your default styles for your website is it's going to automatically match those and that's even more gangster than everything else uh, and then uh, on the legal side of things uh, how does that work uh, with the misses yeah, so, um, well, I first should say that I, I should probably put you on payroll or at least slide you a couple of Benjamins for, the, for that intro. You oh, set it down well, I don't think I'm doing any better. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're, you know, small businesses are not aware about the privacy laws that are about to hit the U.S., and web agencies typically know that privacy is kind of a big deal, and it's probably feeling a little uncomfortable copying and pasting privacy policies from competitor sites or stuff like it, that. Like, it, it's not know. a little uncomfortable. Yeah, it's a lot uncomfortable, it's especially lot. when you know that that person, if they don't know anything about that policy and what it entails and stuff, and they get crashed and burn on that, who are they going to blame? They're going to blame us. A hundred percent. And that's Dude. the problem I saw. And I happen to be dating a privacy attorney who is now my <laughs> fiance. We get married in 46 days Dude. and is the founder of Termageddon. So Donata is the other part of Termageddon. Uh, she's a licensed privacy attorney. Uh, she was the newsletter editor and is now the vice chair of the American Bar Association's e-privacy committee. Uh, she lives and breathes privacy, and that's her specialty. And that's kind of big, though, dude, to to be assigned to that level. Yeah, I need to start working out because I'm entering house husband mode, whether I like it or not. So yeah. <laughs> so um, so yeah, she she's rocking it on that front, and you know. There's lots of companies or there's lots of attorneys that are charging, you know, 100K plus to be, you know, their counsel for privacy compliance. But we know that small business owners, most of off are unaware that there's 23 right. proposed privacy bills in the U.S. Like there are bills in New York that will enable citizens to sue businesses of any size in any location for having as little as a contact form without a compliant privacy policy. Right. And that's that awareness is what people need to be aware of, because as yeah, someone who built websites, I know that if one of my clients got fined or sued for privacy noncompliance, the next phone call would be to me asking me, why didn't I tell them about privacy policies? Because I was offering right. professional web services. So, right. my, but in, in, in the same breath, my thought is web agencies should not be the privacy attorneys for their clients. Oh, Rather, God, use something like our waiver where you just say, hey, sign this, where you acknowledge that I'm not your privacy person. You can go to an attorney, you can use something like Termageddon, or you can choose to do nothing but either way, you're signing this agreement, so I'm limiting the liability of my agency. Um, I, actually, I actually had to add that. Um, like It was like a year and a half ago when we first started working together. Um, as soon as I, I read all that shit, dude, I was like, nope, done. Because there's no way I'm putting myself in that, in that sector for liability. And so I actually had to update my own agreements to say we do not write legal policies. Awesome. I love that. And I think I think we're. I think we're still in the proactive area era. It's not really that crazy right now. Right. Um, Got to wait for people to get sued before they start freaking exactly. out about it. Yeah. So I tell agency owners, look, this is the proactive area. This is the, your chance to not have a reactive problem where you're trying to solve it, and you can get ahead of it. Use our pre-written emails and tell your clients about this is what's happening in privacy. It's getting more important not less important, and it does very well at educating clients. and And many of the clients will sign up with Termageddon and. As an agency owner, you know, you get a free license for your own website, and then you can resell licenses to your clients or use our affiliate program. Definitely. Uh, one of the things you just said, and uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are asking, or not asking, they're thinking is, you said email templates. 
-hmm. What does that consist of and how does that work? So this was yet another request from an agency partner that I wrote up for them. And then I wrote up for another person. Then I'm like, why don't I just write up a standard for everyone to use? So um, really what I wrote up was just kind of a, to serve as a backbone of how to communicate with clients the importance of privacy laws. The right. fact that web agencies aren't privacy attorneys, but as I mentioned earlier, they're going to be looked at as like, why didn't you tell me about a privacy policy? So what I did was I put together just facts, not sales, but facts like, here's what's happening in America, whether you like it or not, this is what's happening. And if you have a website that collects information like a name or an email on a contact form, you need to have a strategy to keep your privacy policy up to date. Right. And, and then obviously it says, you know, term again is what you can use if you like, or you can hire an attorney, so forth. Um, but yeah, that, that was just from requests from agency partners. Hey, can I have like something to send my clients? And now we just give it uh, to agencies when they sign up. Awesome. Yeah, I actually have those templates myself. So, cha ching. You have what? <laughs> I have those templates from you guys. Nice. Yeah, dude, they're, they're pretty slick. I like them. Good. Like uh, them. One of the things you just mentioned was you could hire an attorney. And um, you might recall the conversation that we had uh, where uh, I had a situation where I signed somebody up and they hired an attorney and the attorney went and changed everything. So, how does that work within your ecosystem and uh, what should I do as an agency owner or any other agency out there? What should they do to, I guess, combat that, whether it's a supportive nature for hiring a lawyer or it's a, against it for staying with just termagant and defaults? Yeah, so we're very pro attorneys. In fact, we have many law firms using our platform for their clients. <laughs> so I always say, if you can afford attorney, and like, go for it, please. Like, that's the way to do it. Um, privacy attorneys, they're rare and they're expensive, but if you can go that route, go that route. Um, and if you can't, you know, to, a, a tool like Termageddon is a great alternative. Um, it's built by an attorney. Um, it's monitored and we update it. Um, it's a fraction of the cost. Um, and we offer the abilities to uh, customize policies. So for that example, where the uh, that attorney redlined it, um, and we'll keep that separate, but um, it looked like uh, quite a few billable hours were uh, conveniently added, I guess would say, I would say from, from what we saw from the red line. But regardless, I would, I'm very happy to say that attorneys hardly ever actually redline our stuff for the most part. Um, right. uh, but we offer the ability for them to do that. So each license has a users tab where you can share licenses between agency and client as well as with attorneys so that they can go in and customize the policy to their needs. Why is this beneficial? Well, rather than you having an attorney go start a policy from scratch, they have something to look at and review and provide instant feedback. And the moment they customize it is the moment it pushes live to your website. So you're saving a massive amount of time and attorney's fees um, and uh, you're, uh, you're able to have everyone collaborate together. Um, now that being said, yes, there's many people that just use our generator and get their policies up. And it's, you know, everyone has a different uh, risk tolerance level, but all I, all I can say is we're very pro attorney uh, at Termageddon and, uh, and we built our platform to complement their service offerings to their clients. Yeah, man. Uh, one of the things that I noticed was language. Uh, within a, a default system generated uh, policy versus what I was provided personally by the attorney, it basically says the same thing, but it's normally just reworded a little differently. Uh, in, in those situations, naturally, whatever the lawyer gives you is what they're going to want to be updated, uh, right? Because otherwise, they're no longer supporting it because it's different from what you, they said it was or some crap like that. Yep. Um, so how easy is it to add those custom features or of those policies into the system? So um, I would say that the best way to use them is to generate your policy through term again first and then give it to your attorney to redline. Because if the attorney is working on a, on a like separate to the system and they generate their own, I think you're going to get exactly what you just described is basically the same things that are said, but just in different areas. So I think that clashes a little bit technically you still could go to the override section of our policy and just copy and paste in the changes. Um, and you would still benefit with term again, because we would be alerting you 
when we have new suggested copy because of new privacy laws or amended privacy laws. Right. Um, so you would still reap the benefits of that. Um, and um, yeah, and, and regardless of all of those features and how that all works, I would definitely ask you, if you are working with an attorney, be sure to ask them like, hey, you know, what is your strategy to keep up to date with privacy laws? And if your attorney says, well, you only have to comply with privacy laws within your state, you may want to consider looking for another attorney uh, because one big thing that we're seeing in the, uh, the law community is that many attorneys realize that you don't have to be located in Europe for Europe's privacy law to apply to you. Same so thing for um, California. Or California, great example. Yeah. California has two, CalOPA and the California Consumer Privacy Act. Um, and both of those, yeah, there, there's not a single privacy law that I'm aware of that is restrictive on who's actually collecting the information. They don't care where you're located. If you are processing the personal information of residents or citizens of that state or country or continent, yeah. So, um, so yeah, just make sure you work with a good attorney. A great indicator is asking them, what is your strategy to keep your policy, keep my policy up to date when the laws change? And if they, if they poo poo that and put it to the side, you have a red flag. If they're like, you know, this is how we monitor privacy laws, that's an A plus attorney right there. Awesome. Uh, one of the things that I presume is kind of a big part of the conversation on your end is international stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so how expansive or how expanded is the product right now uh, across the globe, especially, you know, with uh, the European GDPR and stuff like that as well. I know that's a big thing for you guys. Yeah, so our policies, um, we cover all US, European and Canadian privacy laws. Um, and we've just launched compatibility, meaning that you, if you're a business formed in Canada or a business formed in the UK, you can now use Termagun to generate your policies. Okay. So before it was just US, you're protected in also Canada and Europe. Now right. it's Canada and Europe has the ability to create policies. Exactly. Dude. Yes. So that's, we were. Uh -huh. That's huge. Awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah. A lot of work. <laughs> uh, but we yeah. got launched. And, um, and for UK and Canada businesses, we only offer the privacy policy at the moment. But in the next two months, we'll be having the terms of service be added to the license and then the disclaimer at no additional cost. Awesome. Yeah, dude, I think you can add like five policies, I think, something like that. Um, you can add, well, yeah, four, uh, privacy policy, terms of service, disclaimer, and end user license agreement. Yeah, and they're all included in the license. Yep. Awesome. Uh, and how soon are we getting that custom policy segment added? Custom policy segment. Uh, I, to add a custom policy. Like a whole separate custom policy? Oh, boy. It's in our it's in our. <laughs> Um, I know. <laughs> so one thing that we're going to be adding before we add the custom policy feature is that we are going to be adding in the override section that you can add additional sections. So maybe you would say, hey, I don't want sections of the section. Yeah, I just want to add additional sections. So I know that will come before that. Uh, but then the ability to add your own policies will come shortly after. If you want to hold me to it, I would say next year, but more realistically, end of this year. Okay. Yeah, because that's going to be huge uh, for, for agencies, especially when we're talking. That would have been huge starting like January, you know, think of like e-commerce stores. Uh, but even still, just for e-commerce in general or anyone selling online, that, that aspect is... Yeah, well, in terms of service, which is included, does cover most e-commerce requirements for sure. But like a shipping policy is a great example where right. if you need something beyond, you know, if you need to shipping, shipping and returns, policy, yeah, that's a great example of, yeah. of why I think you have a good idea. One thing we are considering is launching an accessibility statement, which will be a generator right within our uh, license. Um, we're yes. still going through that because, as you know, accessibility, you, it's not a get out of jail card just to have no. a just to have a statement on there. It's and that's not. The, that's what we're trying to balance out. So there is a whole lot of work involved in accessibility, and quite frankly, uh, you know, there's there's not a one size fits all solution. Uh, you know, especially a lot of people on WordPress try to they get into that cycle of you know the, where's the plugin that solves this problem for me, and you know this is too big, too important, too critical to your well being. To, to just yeah. really 
focus everything on a plugin, but at the same time, like it can collapse your whole business if you're not ready for it. Yeah, it's been so, uh, quite chaotic hearing how aggressive the lawsuits are becoming within the accessibility industry. Right. Uh, I actually, um, I actually have a segment in my agreement that, or I have a special agreement because people, a lot of companies are not willing to pay the the cost just to become accessible, right? And, and there is lies the fundamental problem is that the clients are not ready for how much it's going to cost, which puts them not in a proactive phase, but a reactive phase. They're just waiting to right. get started. And then they're going to freak out and be upset. And it's just, it's just a terrible, I'll tell you, it's a huge challenge we have in the web industry right now. A huge right. Because um, web agency owners understand how important accessibility is. They can offer it, but it's expensive. And, yeah. and, and, and then the business is left having to make a decision. They're, I think, subconsciously blaming the agency owner when the agency owner has nothing to do with it. It's law right. that they have to comply with. And right. you a, a creator of those laws, but it's a very unfortunate conversation because usually quotes double, you know? Um, right. And, and Here's the lawsuit. How much does it take to fix? Well, it's two or three times more than it was six months ago. Exactly. Yeah, because at that point, you're under the microscope for everything that you do. Right. And it's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's tough. Uh, but actually, there's one thing that I do that some people overlook is even if they don't, uh, even if the client doesn't want me to add that, uh, I'll have them sign something saying that, hey, I declined these services. And then I use like a user way widget or something like that. That way, at least they have they have something because something's better than nothing. Yes. Um, and then at the same time, I'm covered. Yeah. No, that, yeah. Makes, that makes sense. Yeah. And it all comes down. I love how you document everything. Like it's, it all comes down to just letting the customer know, don't try to hide it. That is the worst thing you can do is pretend. Oh, I know. It. Get in front of it, acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's term again, we, we try to turn it into an opportunity and, and with it, and, but accessibility, privacy, these are things you just have to get documented. You just, you just do. This is the new world yeah. we're entering. So. Yeah, everything has to be on paper. Yes. Yeah. That's the world I grew up in, uh, in the Marine Corps, where if it's not on paper, it doesn't exist. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of on par where I used to be, so. There you go. Awesome, man. Uh, is there anything else that you have in the pipeline? Um. We have some goodies. Uh, we we have give them away yet? Okay. No, okay. <laughs> I, I, uh, I report to my fiance slash attorney slash president. I oh, okay. And whenever Give me a I, second. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I uh, promise on dates, uh, I usually get a lecture. So I'm, I'm going to say we got some exciting things in the hopper, but I'm going to keep it mysterious for now. <laughs> I like that. I like that. You know, it, um, just with the, you know, the baseline of service that you guys offer right out the gate, it's it's amazing. So I'm sure that whatever you come up with next is, is going to take it to the next level and push the bar. Uh, so I definitely love that. Uh, so that's pretty much everything I had for you. Um, so how can people find you on online? Yeah, so um, visit termageddon.com, uh, T-E-R-M-A-G-E-D-D-O-N. Dot com and I know you'll be providing links in the description and yep. uh, and yeah you know we have an agency partners page I invite you to check that out if you're a law firm check out our law firm's partners page if you need help getting your policy set up and you're not an agency or law firm like sign up buy a license I'd be happy to walk you through the setup process even awesome well you heard it straight from the horse's mouth the term again man himself Hans Skillrud Hans thanks for coming on today I definitely Definitely love having you on. It's been a journey between us together for the time. And yeah. um, we'll see where this takes us, you know? Thank you so much. Awesome, man. Well, hey, everyone out there in Facebook and podcast land. This is Jared from Digital Battlefield signing off.